Welcome to Thrive with Pride from Age Options, an online space for LGBT older adults and those who care for them. This month, we welcomed the Medicare experts of advisory by Age Options for a presentation on Medicare basics and a great Q&A, which we did not record. Be sure to see the video description below for more information, including a copy of the slides in this presentation and information on how you can reach a SHIP counselor to have your Medicare questions answered. The video description also contains a link to a very brief survey, which we ask you to fill out after watching this video. It's quick, anonymous, and really helps us improve our programming. Okay. Good morning. Welcome to Thrive with Pride. We are so happy today to welcome three very special guests. Elizabeth Durkin, Manager of Healthcare Education and Counseling, and Margaret Kimbrell and Stella Vanden Eden, Advisory Training Specialists at Age Options. Elizabeth, Margaret, and Stella all work with our advisory program, which provides tools and support to professionals serving older adults and people with disabilities, enabling them to access healthcare coverage. With Medicare's open enrollment period coming up, starts on October 15th every year, we wanted to offer you some solid, unbiased information on your healthcare choices. If you're here with us live on Zoom, you are welcome to type questions into your chat box throughout Elizabeth's presentation. Stella is going to be monitoring the chat and replying as she is able. If you don't have access to the chat or if you have a more complicated question, never fear. After the presentation, we're going to invite everyone to turn your mics back on and you'll have a chance to ask any additional questions and have some give and take. If you are watching this on the recording, stay tuned or look at the video description below this video for information on how to contact a SHIP counselor and get your questions answered. So Elizabeth, whenever you are ready. Great, thank you so much, Kate. Um, so I wanted to just thank everybody for coming today. Um, we are going to be talking about Medicare kind of at a very um, high level. Medicare is a pretty complicated topic, unfortunately, and it's a lot to um, cram into a short period of time. Um, so while we'll be talking today about eligibility and enrollment and some of the different parts of Medicare and a little bit about how to help pay for it, uh, my main goal is that you come away from today with sort of three main understandings, which is just that, um, that Medicare does have different parts, that there are some deadlines and important time periods that you have to be aware of, um, and that there are costs to Medicare and ways to help pay for it, and then some resources that you can use to find further information. Um, so next slide, please. So what is Medicare? So Medicare is a federal health insurance program for people who are um, 65 or older or who have disabilities. Um, it is administered by two different federal agencies. The Social Security Administration handles um, eligibility for Medicare and um, enrollment. So that's the agency that decides if you are eligible for Medicare and lets you enroll in the program. But on a day-to-day -day basis, the running of the Medicare program as a health insurance program is done by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is um, often called just by its initials CMS. Next slide, please. So in terms of who is eligible for Medicare, again, this is determined by the Social Security Administration. <clears throat> so if you're over the age of 65, 65 or older, you're eligible for Medicare. But people who are under age 65 can also qualify. Um, they can qualify on the basis of having a disability and having spent 24 months where they are receiving disability benefits. In other words, your first month of disability, you're not eligible for Medicare, but upon your 25th month, um, you are eligible for Medicare no matter what age you are. And that will be disability either through the Social Security uh, Disability Insurance Program or through railroad retirement benefits. There are also two specific kind of medical conditions that will qualify you for Medicare um, regardless of the time period and regardless of your age. 
And that is if you have end-stage renal disease or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, um, ALS, which is commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. And then the, uh, uh, Margaret, can you uh, hit click? Um, the final aspect of eligibility for Medicare is that you must be a US citizen or a lawfully admitted non-citizen. Now, some people will be automatically enrolled in Medicare, and then some people have to enroll themselves. And so I'll talk about those two different groups. <clears throat> the reason it's different, just for background, is that um, people used to retire from their jobs and um, become eligible for Medicare uh, when they turned 65. And you could retire and get Social Security benefits at 65, and you could become eligible for Medicare at 65. But as the Social Security age has been pushed out um, to 66 and to 67 for some other people, it, it complicates things a little bit. So if when you become eligible for Medicare, you are already receiving Social Security benefits, um, you will automatically be enrolled in Medicare because they kind of they know that you're already receiving Social Security benefits or railroad retirement benefits, and they will automatically enroll you when you um, are getting to be eligible. And about three months before your eligibility date, they will send you a packet in the mail that is called your Welcome to Medicare packet, and it will give you a lot of information about the choices that you need to make around. Medicare enrollment. One of those choices that you can make actually is to postpone enrolling in Medicare. And we'll talk a little bit more about um, why somebody might postpone, but in general, um, sometimes people have access to other health insurance. And so they might particularly want to postpone um, uh, aspects of Medicare that involve paying a premium. So you can make the choice after you receive your Welcome to Medicare packet to actually delay enrollment. Um, next slide, Margaret. All right, who needs to apply for Medicare? So if you are not automatically enrolled, but you are about to turn 65, um, you need to apply for Medicare um, if you have not already been receiving your Social Security benefits. And so if you're still working um, or for other reasons, you're not yet, you've not yet asked for your social security benefits to be sent to you, but you are turning 65, you do need to enroll in Medicare. Um, and then the other group would be people who previously decided to postpone their enrollment um, and they now want to be in Medicare. And so they need to apply. And they do that by going, as I said, to the Social Security Administration, um, either calling or uh, going to the website, you can enroll there. Next slide. But what's important to take away from this um, discussion today is that there are time periods related to Medicare enrollment that are important for everyone to keep in mind so the no you know that you're doing it at the right time. Medicare has something that they call your initial enrollment period. And this is when they want people for the most part to enroll and there are incentives for enrolling at the right time. Um, the initial enrollment period begins three months before your 65th birthday, uh, the month of your 65th birthday and three months after that. And we uh, there's a shortcut for that. They call it the 313 rule. Um, if you're becoming eligible based on disability, it's the 25th month of your disability um, that is, is the middle of those seven months. And if you enroll in Medicare during this time period, you will, um, you will not have any penalties. This is when they want you to do it. I will say that there is one slight exception to this rule, and that is if your birthday is on the first of the month. And then it it kind of works like they act like you were the uh, your birthday was the day the month before or the day before. So everything would get shift shifted back one month if your birthday is on the first. Uh, next slide. 
So if for some reason you do not enroll during your initial enrollment period, if you missed the date or there was some other reason um, that you were not able to enroll during your initial enrollment period, every year there is a period that is called the general enrollment period in which you are also allowed to enroll. Um, it is January through March of every year. And up through this current year, if you applied during the general enrollment period, you would then begin to receive your Medicare coverage on July 1st. <clears throat> so there would have been a gap. Um, next year, though, this is changing. And so for everyone who applies during their general enrollment period, um, their coverage will start the month after they applied. So if they apply in January, they'll start to get coverage in February. If they apply in March, they'll begin to get coverage in April. Um, but it's still true that you can't apply during uh, any time after March. And even when you apply during this allowed general enrollment period, you can face penalties because you didn't uh, apply during your general enrollment. And so that's uh, kind of the, again, the takeaway to understand is that Medicare wants you to enroll during your initial enrollment period. And they give you this other opportunity but will apply some financial penalties. I won't go into detail about those. And if you are interested, you can go to the medicare.gov website to find out more about those penalties. Um, but uh, if you could click now, um, there are then additional time periods, however, in which people who did not apply during their initial enrollment period are able to apply without the kind of penalties that I just discussed. So Medicare does recognize that there are some times that people um, don't need coverage during uh, their initial enrollment period. And that is uh, most often because somebody is still working or their spouse is still working. And so they still have insurance coverage. And so they don't want to start uh, paying for Medicare. And so in those circumstances, um, Medicare will give you what's called a special enrollment period. And there are some other circumstances in which um, they, uh, they acknowledge that people didn't need to uh, get Medicare during their initial time. And so these certain special enrollment periods allow you to enroll in Medicare um, for exceptional circumstances and you won't get a penalty. So again, good to inform yourself about um, all the different possible special enrollment periods, but main takeaway is to understand that um, when you enroll is important and can have some financial ramifications if you're late. Next slide. Uh, um, another thing that um, people have to un uh, understand about Medicare is that when you do choose to enroll, you'll be asked whether you want to receive your Medicare in one of two different ways. Original Medicare is what is used to refer to kind of how the Medicare law was first devised in the early 60s when it, uh, it was originally authorized. And it splits Medicare up into different parts, and we'll talk about each of them in a little bit. Um, if you choose a different, there's an alternative way though, instead of the original Medicare, which is called Medicare Advantage. With Medicare Advantage, they combine the different parts of Medicare into one plan that would be offered um, by a commercial insurance company that contracts with Medicare to offer your plan. So Medicare Advantage plans often include um, part D, which is your drug coverage. And we'll, again, we'll be talking in more detail about these different parts, but the main thing is there's original Medicare, uh, where things are in different parts, or Medicare Advantage, private commercial health plans that combine your Medicare parts into one plan. So uh, we will go into more detail now about the different parts of original Medicare. Next slide. Um, uh, part A is hospital insurance. And the important thing to know about Part A is that most people um, will receive Part A, whoops, back, uh, will receive Part A for free. 
So the vast majority of us will never have to pay uh, Part A premium. We will get the coverage for free. There'll be costs associated with it, but we don't have to pay a monthly premium for Part A. And that is anybody who has worked what are called 40 quarters of work credits. And that is basically equivalent to having worked for about 10 years and um, paid into Social Security, paid your FICA taxes. And that differs, um, the time period differs if you're eligible for Medicare due to a disability, but um, based on age, it's this 10 years um, equivalent of having paid Social Security taxes. You can also uh, qualify for the premium Part A uh, based on your spouse's work record or a former spouse's work record if you were married to that person for at least 10 years. If, however, you haven't done this, you haven't paid these uh, uh, in these taxes for 10 years or don't have a spouse that you qualify for, it is possible to purchase Part A. Um, and there's two different prices based on um, how many uh, quarters that you may have paid taxes. Um, but it is quite pricey, topping out at uh, multi-hundreds of uh, dollars. Um, so the premium Part A, if you have to pay it, can be quite costly. Next slide. Back one slide. Oh, no, this is the... Okay, sorry. Thanks. Uh, so Part A, what does Part A cover? It's often, as I said, called hospital insurance, but it does cover other kinds of facilities. It will cover uh, stay in a hospital. Um, it will cover time in a skilled nursing facility. It will cover home health care. That is when uh, nurses and uh, therapists come to your home. Um, if you were in the hospital for a condition and you need to still uh, recover from that condition, um, you can get your home health paid for under Part A. Part A also covers hospice care. It's important to know that Part A does actually does not cover physician's services that are given within the hospital. Those will be covered under Part B, which is your regular medical insurance. Uh, so the Part A hospital covers the nursing and the the stay in the room and the labs and the medic, um, but not physician services within the hospital. Next slide. Part A um, has something that is a little bit unusual for um, health insurance because it is not based on um, a calendar year deductible, which is what many of us are familiar with. Um, like say in our employer plans, you would have a um, an annual deductible. Part A is something that's a little bit more like a, a car insurance or homeowner's insurance, where every time you make a claim, you face a deductible. Part A is a little bit more like that. They have something called a benefit period, and that begins when a person is admitted as an inpatient to a hospital for some condition, and the benefit period ends when they have not been in an inpatient hospital or skilled nursing facility for 60 days. So essentially, when you've been home in the community for 60 days, your benefit period is over. But if you go home for a little while, um, less than 60 days, and then you go back in the hospital, that is the same benefit period. Um, next click. And what is important for Part A to understand is that uh, a deductible will be charged for each benefit period. Again, it's not based on a calendar year. It's based on a, this time frame of a benefit period. And in 2022, that deductible is $1,556, um, which is a lot of money. <clears throat> and because you can um, go into the hospital, say, in February, because you have um, a knee replacement surgery and be back in the hospital in September because you had a stroke, you would have to pay that deductible for each of those benefit periods. Um, and those costs can add up quite a bit. So it's just a, it's something that people need to understand about the, 
the original Medicare. And in a little bit, we'll talk about how you can get some help with that, but that's how part A works. Uh, next slide. And this is just a review of how additional costs work under part A hospital stays. So once you've paid that first $1,556 deductible, which you pay like on the, on the first day you're admitted, you then can stay in the hospital for an additional 60 days and have um, no additional hospital related costs. You may have the physician's costs that I talked about earlier, um, but the hospital will not charge you for an additional 60 days. If you stay um, beyond that 60 days for up to 90 more days, you'll have a copay of uh, you know, close to $400 per day. Um, that's not very common. Most people are not in the hospital for that long anymore, but you would face that copay every day beyond 60 that you have a hospital stay. And then finally, after 90 days, there is something that is called um, your lifetime revert reserve days, which is like a pool of days that you have to use across your lifetime anytime that you need to stay in the hospital past 90 days. Um, and again, the copay for that then rises quite a bit. So again, not to have you memorize any of this, but just to have you understand how your hospital costs can change the longer you're staying in the hospital. Next slide. Um, uh, and then just to go back to one thing about Part A that I forgot to say. And so in addition to the hospital costs, then also because Part A covers skilled nursing and covers home health and covers hospice, There'll also be different costs associated with those. And again, you can learn more about that by going to the Medicare.gov website. All right, uh, next slide, we'll be moving on to medical insurance. So Part B covers most of the things that you would normally think of as the kind of health care that you receive outside of a hospital. Um, it'll cover your doctor's services. As I said, um, that's inpatient doctor services. But anytime you go to the doctor, um, anytime you do something in the hospital that is an outpatient procedure, like a colonoscopy or an MRI, um, Part B also covers things like um, therapy, physical, occupational, and speech therapy. Uh, next click. Um, it covers lab services, tests, um, ambulance, transportation, um, durable medical equipment is things like walkers, oxygen, um, maybe a CPAP device, things that people need um, at home to help them with their medical conditions. Um, I mentioned earlier that home health following a hospital stay is covered under Part A, but if you need home health maybe for a chronic condition that's getting worse, that is not putting you in the hospital, but you need more help at home, uh, Part B will cover home health in that circumstance. And then Part B also covers some medications, um, generally like those that require um, maybe an injection or require a nurse to deliver. Next slide. Uh, Part B also has some costs associated with it. As I said, most people would get Part A premium free, but Part B has a monthly premium. In 2022, that premium is $170 a month. Um, we got very good news this morning that next year that is going to go down. Um, and so in 2023, the Part B um, standard premium is going to be um, $164.90. Um, Part B also has the annual deductible. That's the amount you have to pay at the beginning of the year before um, you get any Part B coverage. And that in this year is $233. Then once you've met your deductible, how um, the rest of Part B works is for most services, <clears throat> Medicare will pay 80% and you pay 20%. <laughs> Excuse me one minute. <clears throat> Some procedures, however, don't work based on um, a percentage of the fee. 
there is a fixed fee uh, that you have to pay. And that would be certain kinds of procedures um, or other services that have a fixed amount. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> There's some common health things, though, that Medicare doesn't cover. And um, some people don't know about those. So I will share those with you. Uh, Medicare does not cover most dental care, vision care, eyeglasses. Um, it doesn't cover hearing aids, cosmetic surgery, care received outside of the U.S. So if you're somebody who likes to travel and you're on Medicare, um, you need to make sure you get some other kind of travel-related health care insurance because um, Medicare, original Medicare does not cover travel outside the U.S. Um, and then certain kind of alternative medicines like um, massage or acupuncture are generally not covered by Medicare and non-emergency transportation. So an ambulance would be covered, but um, a, like a medic car to take you to a doctor's appointment would not. Next slide. Medicare does also doesn't cover what we call custodial care or personal care. I'm sorry, I'm gonna hold on one second and go on mute. Um, so oftentimes people have the impression um, that you could get um, help with things like uh, bathing or dressing, um, that sort of personal care, uh, that Medicare would cover that. And it actually doesn't, except if you are getting uh, skilled home health care at home, there are some times that you can get um, custodial care at home. But Medicare also doesn't cover housekeeping services, so help with meals or um, or shopping or cleaning. Um, only if you are currently receiving hospice care does Medicare cover those kind of benefits. So those kind of services, when people need a lot of help with custodial care or they, they can't really maintain themselves in their home, is when uh, people would also, uh, often make the decision to enter into a nursing home. And long-term care in a nursing home is not covered by Medicare. Um, it is only for... Uh, a brief period of time, a limit of 100 days, you could get skilled nursing care in a nursing facility after you've been in a hospital. But if you're going to be living for a long time as a permanent resident in a nursing home, that is not covered by Medicare. Next slide. So that was part A and part B. Um, the next part we're going to talk about is part D, which is drug coverage. So Medicare Part D is something that is not was not part of the original Medicare legislation. It was added later, um, and it is a way of getting your prescription drug coverage. It's offered only by private companies that contract with Medicare, and um, people can get their Part D either as something that is called a standalone prescription drug plan that works if you have original Medicare. Um, it also can be a Medicare Advantage plan that has drug coverage built in it. As I showed those puzzle pieces in the earlier slide, Medicare Advantage plans often include the drug coverage in them. Medicare Part D is pretty complicated, um, partly because the law that went into put it, putting it together was um, had a lot of uh, compromises and a lot of different kinds of interests that were being put together. Uh, <clears throat> but um, it, it's important to know that each Part D plan has something that is called a formulary. It's a list of prescription drugs that the plan will choose to cover. And not every drug will be covered by every company. So when you enroll in Medicare, or choose a Part D plan, um, you have to be very careful that the plan you're choosing covers the drugs that you normally take. In addition to having simply a list of drugs that they will cover, 
the plans sometimes use strategies um, related to the drugs that they cover to uh, kind of manage how people use them. So they may use something called tiering, which is where they put the most expensive drugs they would charge you a higher copay for. Uh, plans can also require you to try a certain drug first, usually a cheaper drug, before they will let you try a more expensive drug. <clears throat> and they may do things like uh, put quantity limitations, like you are only allowed to order a certain number of capsules at a time. And those are different ways that your Medicare Part D plan might try and um, kind of restrict or control your use of certain medications. Next slide. Um, Part D costs vary depending on the plan. So uh, plans can give similar coverage, but they can charge you different premiums. And so that's something that you have to look at carefully when you're choosing a Part D plan. Um, and again, you'd also wanna look at, again, the kind of, um, of strategies of, of restricting drug usage that I talked about. Um, sometimes, if you want a more generous plan uh, that has fewer of those restrictions, you're going to have to pay a higher premium. Part D plans also can, uh, sometimes they might have a deductible, sometimes they might not. They are limited um, in 2022. The highest deductible is $480, uh, but some plans will offer zero deductible. Um, <clears throat> And again, I said uh, the tier of the drug. So if you are choosing a, a more expensive drug, your plan might charge you a $50 copay or you know something that they're gonna charge you more money for a higher tiered drug. I mentioned that phase uh, part D was complicated. And um, so there's one aspect of it that I don't have time to cover today because it's really very, <laughs> Very confusing. Um, but across the year, there are different phases of coverage. Uh, I've given you a link um, to medicareinteractive.org, and they have information about a lot of different Medicare things. Um, and if you uh, were to click on that link when you uh, get the slides, it tell, takes you right to an explanation of the different phases of coverage. The important thing to uh, know is that you may be paying a different amount for your drugs in um, January as you might be paying for them in May, and then as you might be paying for them in December. Um, and it's also true that people who uh, use more expensive drugs will move through the phases much more quickly so that you might get all the way through the phases by by April if you have very expensive, say, cancer drugs or other kinds of things that cost a lot of money. Whereas some other people who don't use as many medications or who mostly use generic medications may, may stay in phase one the whole year. So it really depends on your um, medication uses and the cost of your drugs, how you might use, how you might move through those phases across a year but you will pay different prices um, or may pay different prices as the months of the year go on. Next slide. Um, part D enrollment works like um, when you enroll in Part B. Um, so you have your initial enrollment period, it's the same. Um, and if you don't enroll during that time, um, if you don't have a, a special enrollment period, um, you'll face a penalty. Um, Additionally, uh, Part D plans, um, you can enroll in a new plan every year during the open enrollment period. So that's the period Kate mentioned that is coming up. It's October 15th to December 7th of every year. And uh, Medicare beneficiaries during this time can choose to uh, select a different Medicare um, Part D plan they can also uh, enroll in Medicare Advantage plans or switch Medicare Advantage plans. Um, they could go from a plan that didn't have Part D coverage to a plan that does, um, or you can um, you know, choose a new Part D plan. So every year, um, if you do have a Part D plan around this time of the year, you should be receiving some information from the plan that is telling you about whether there's gonna be any changes in their formulary 
in the coming year. And so you want to review those notices to make sure that, say, a drug that you take doesn't get removed from their formulary. Um, and their prices might change, the premium they charge might change. And so that's why every year at this time, you do want to review um, your Part D plan or your Medicare Advantage plan. Also, if you are in a Medicare Advantage plan that has uh, Part D coverage bundled into it, um, there's also another period um, kind of at the beginning of every year from January to March that you can um, find a new Medicare Advantage plan or you can um, go back to original Medicare. And that is um, so another time where if you make a change in your Medicare Advantage plan, it might cause you to then have to make a change in your Part D plan. So that's just one other time of the year that your Part D enrollment may change. Um, and I mentioned earlier that like, like with Part B, there are some special enrollment periods um, for Part D where you can um, uh, enroll in Medicare coverage even when you didn't earlier um, without a penalty. And again, that's often related to the fact that you had what is called creditable drug coverage under an employer plan or some other form of um, of drug coverage that Medicare considers valid, and they let you keep that coverage and, and not enroll in Part D until later. Next slide. Um, like I said earlier, if you don't enroll during your initial enrollment period or a special enrollment period, um, there can be penalties or there will be penalties, um, and these can add up because they are um, imposed every month that you didn't enroll. Um, and it's calculated as what they call 1% of the national base premium. You don't have to memorize that term. Uh, know that in this year of 2022, the national base premium is $33. And so you would pay 1% of that every month that you didn't enroll in Part D when you should have. Um, and this is something that you will pay for as long as you're enrolled in a Part D plan um, with some few exceptions. Next slide. So um, that was my very brief uh, review of some of the different parts of Medicare. And um, what I am sure you came away with is a sense of like, wow, this costs maybe more than I thought. Um, I've been paying Social Security taxes uh, this whole time, and I thought I was going to get into Medicare and everything was going to be free or very low cost. Um, and unfortunately, that's that's not exactly the way our health system works. So there are some uh, ways to help pay all those costs that I'm just going to touch on very briefly. So you've heard the words and you can go um, and try and find some more information about it. Um, Many people are familiar with the term Medicare supplement or a Medigap plan. These are private health plans. Um, if you have to have parts A and part B, you have to be enrolled in the, those two parts of original Medicare. And um, then you can buy from a private company a separate plan that will cover many of your costs. Um, your uh, the, the co-pays, the co-insurances, the deductibles, not everything. And what a Medigap plan will cover depends on uh, the structure of the plan. Um, some of them are more generous and some of them are less generous. And the more generous ones will charge you a higher premium. When you are uh, pay a Medicare sub, when you buy a Medicare supplement, you pay a premium for that that you pay on top of your Part B premium and uh, and on top of your Part D premium. So, um, but they do help cover some of the major costs related to Medi Medicare. <clears throat> another, wh whoops, sorry, back. Uh, another way that you can uh, get help paying for Medicare is if you enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan. These are called the Part C of Medicare uh, related to the law that was passed that allowed them to happen. Medicare Advantage plans are run by private companies. As I said, you also have to have parts A and B both to get a Medicare Advantage plan, and they may include prescription drug coverage. 
Um, Medicare Advantage plans also have premiums, although sometimes they're very low um, or even a no premium, but that doesn't mean no cost because with Medicare Advantage plans, you often pay a copay or a coinsurance every time you use a medical service. Um, that means that you'll kind of get costs across the year with the Medicare Advantage plan. But the one way that it does help you save money compared to, um, say, a Medigap plan is that Medicare Advantage plans do have a maximum out of pocket um, for the year. It will vary by plan, and that's part of what you look for. Um, again, a lower maximum out of pocket, you'll probably pay a higher monthly premium for. But the maximum out of pocket is sort of like a stopgap where you know that come the end of the year, you won't have paid anything more than that maximum amount for your health insurance for the year. Um, and so that's a way that a Medicare Advantage plan can help save you money. They also sometimes provide additional benefits that are not covered by Medicare, um, like dental or vision. And so they can help you save costs that way. And finally, there is a specific program that is for low income, um, this says seniors, but it's low income Medicare beneficiaries who need help covering their Medicare costs. Medicare savings programs are actually offered by Medicaid. So they're run by the state of Illinois, not the federal government. And you apply for them through the Department of Human Services um, in Illinois. But they um, can help pay your premium or for people who are um, at the lowest income levels um, will also cover uh, most of your coinsurance and co-pays. Um, and whether you qualify will depend on your income and what, um, uh, what level of income you have and other assets that you own like real estate or, um, or stocks or other kinds of things. The next slide. Um, so I'm providing here some resources for people. As I said, this was very high level. And so I know that it isn't enough to really help anyone make a decision. One um, resource I want you to really know about, um, since they can be a hidden gem sometimes that people aren't aware of, is the Senior Health Insurance Program. Every state has a Senior Health Insurance Program, and they... Um, provide unbiased counseling to seniors. So unlike, um, you know, a broker that is, uh, you know, earning a commission for selling certain insurance plans, a SHIP uh, counselor is doesn't receive any compensation um, for the, the advice they give you. They won't tell you what plan to enroll in, but they will guide you and help you think about how you should make your own decisions um, based on what's best for you. Um, so you can um, access the um, SHIP program through this link, and then um, we can also uh, later put a phone number in the chat for you for contacting um, a SHIP counselor. There is also something called the Senior Medicare Patrol Program. Um, Senior Medicare Patrol's goal is to help Medicare beneficiaries um, avoid being the victims of fraud but also to help them uh, learn how to identify fraud and report it. Um, and I've also provided uh, the websites for Social Security and CMS. And that is the end of my presentation. Again, I know I went um, kind of long, but it, that's sort of the basics uh, we think you kind of need to know to know what you need to look into further and to know where to go for help. Thanks again to Elizabeth for her presentation and to Margaret and Stella for answering the questions of attendees live. Again, there is a link to Elizabeth's slides in the video description below, as well as information on how to get in touch with a SHIP counselor who can help you make the most of your Medicare coverage. Please remember to fill out the brief survey in the video description below. It really does help us. We invite you to join us for our next monthly event on Tuesday, October 25th. We will be welcoming special guests, Dr. Jane Fleischman and Dr. Amani Woody, who will talk to us about the interconnected issues of sex, sexuality, activism, and aging, sharing insights from their lives and from Dr. Fleischman's book, The Stonewall Generation. Attending our events means that you get to interact with our guests and have them answer your questions live. Login information is posted below or can be found on our website at thrivingwithpride.org. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon.